Okay, so you can see on the screen here, I've loaded up a new cell within RoboGuide. And on the right-hand side, I have our assignment, which is Lab 3 Offsets PRIJs with using RoboGuide. Um, this application uh, is a factory that wants to automate their uh, manual process of applying thread lock to bolts. Uh, you propose an MP conveyor that applies a thread locker to a pallet of bolts. The robot will dip each uh, bolt uh, with its end of arm tooling, uh, but first it dips into a well to wet the uh, applica applicator, uh, and then it dips that applicator into each um, bolt so that the internal threads get uh, an application of thread lock on them. And then it repeats for all 12 bolts, uh, but in this lab you're not creating 12 positions for each one of the bolts, you're, you're creating an array using uh, PRIJs or position register offsets. So let's build the cell. You open up RoboGuide, click new cell, and call it next, select 8.3, next. Uh, we'll set up the end of arm tooling later. And the robot you're going to pick, let's page down here to the second page where I spell out all the specifics of what you're picking for this robot cell. And in this case, it's an H721R2000IC slash 165F. So if I go to that H721, next, and continue just to pick the defaults, and finish. And we end up with an empty cell with just this robot. I'm going to now enter some of the fixtures. And the first would be an e-feed conveyor add from the CAD library, just from conveyor. And the first selection here, conveyor IGS, say OK. And for convenience sake, it comes in in the Z value quite a bit higher than what's needed and the orientation's off. So I'm going to change my orientation so that it fits this cell. And there we have the conveyor added. Next, let's go to the build a box. And I'm going to come down here, rename this guy to conveyor. It's a feature here where I can add a fixture and it's a simple box. And then I'm going to add the dimensions, the color, um, and I can even put an image on here. I'm going to change the location and the dimensions to represent what I've done in the cell. That's how I've entered these values. I'm going to hit apply. And that's about where I wanted to sit. I'll click just to change it up, I'd prefer you guys pick a random color, your own personal color. Now we're looking at, uh, like something unique, just so you could tell it's your cell that you built. Let's go back to that for a minute. There's something here I wanted to show you that um, I actually want you to put on this an image. So if you go on the internet and pick a an image, anything other than what I have in my Loctite, just to show it's yours unique um, idea. Come along here and go onto a, a web browser, pick an image, and paste on here. It can be your photo if you want to, or your favorite sneaker, or whatever. And I'm going to go back to this and change it back to my original color. Okay, apply. And my image happened to be a Loctite logo. Let's do the part weld, this part right here. And let's go to parts, add part, CAD library. And it's under fabric, I believe, and it should be pipe. I would just use normal quality, click OK, 
I've zoomed into it and here I'm going to double click to get it to its properties and make it not visible because we don't want the part just floating out there. We want to add it to a fixture. Apply, say OK. And we see now that we have this new part over here and we'll call that well for thread lock. OK. Now let's go down to the next, the plunger that'll sit in the end of arm tooling. Back to part, add part, CAD library, fabric, truncated cone, okay. Normal quality, okay. So I'm gonna come over here and call this, it's default part one, I'm gonna call it thread locker plunger, apply, okay. All right, let's go back to our cell. Let's add the gripper. It's under grippers, and it's gonna be the 3600 5F. We come up here to the robot, expand its properties under tooling, double click, open up all the different U-Tool frames that are available, and within the U-Tool frames is where you define the end of arm tooling. Okay, and then under the CAD file, I'm gonna open up this folder and I'm going to navigate to, you'll come to this folder. I'm gonna to navigate to grippers. And this is a, a long uh, grippers, 3600, 3600F-200IGS. And I'm gonna change some of the parameters of the gripper so that it actually fits our application. I'm gonna change the orientation because if you see, if I actually apply this and it builds it out, for some reason, it's orientation. It was probably imported incorrectly and the orientation's off. So, um, and this kind of messes with some other things. Uh, so be careful. Uh, I'm gonna change the yaw to minus 90. And I'm also gonna, at the same time, gonna scale it so that it fits our product, the bolt. And hit apply. Next, let's add our parts to our fixture. We'll start with our applicator well. Double click on it. Go to the parts tab. Click on the well. So you can see the importance of actually adding identifiers or part names for each one of our parts. I'm gonna put the well for the thread lock on this um, fixture. Apply. Simulation and click OK. And if you notice that shows up, it is in wireframe. So I'll come over here to the well and change its properties to not be in wireframe. Click apply. OK. And now we've got the well. Let's add the applicator to the end of arm tooling. Double click on the end of arm tooling. Go to the parts tab. Thread locker plunger, apply. And you see it's by default, it's gonna to go to the origin of the end of arm tooling. Um, let me go here and actually edit part offset and then drag it. And you can see that's about where we want it. Maybe about there. Click OK. And just for good measure, let's save our project. Now there's one more part we need to bring into this project, obviously, and that's the product, the actual bolt. So let's go over here to um, parts, add part, CAD library. And that's located in this directory. So I'm gonna go to uh, workpiece and this should be work zero one this is our guy right here double click on it normal image quality will be fine for us click ok and zoom out to find where it's come in it's come over here um, we can double click on that in the tree of parts rename it to bolts and then we'll come over to our conveyor add the bolt apply, zoom in, and we'll see it's just a little off. It's not in the right location. 
So we'll put it more in the place where we want it to be to represent the array or the palette that we're going to have on the conveyor. So I'm going to edit the part offset, change the X here to about 50 and the Y to about 100. And that should be good for us right about there. I'm going to save for good measure. And this is where, let's go back to our fixture here, our parts. We can add a, it says here's number of parts. We can add an array here. And we can say in the X direction, I pulled up this, um, this image that I put in the lab. And you can see in the X direction, we're going to have three rows, Y direction, four columns. Our distances are 200 in the X direction and 150 in the Y. Let's place it to 50 of the Z. And this is how we're looking. I want some contrast with these parts, so I'm going to actually change the color. So again, I just went to the parts tab for the bolt. Picked on the color picker here. I didn't want to use the default color and picked a custom color. All right, you choose something unique to your liking. Click OK. And at this point, going back to our document, we should have everything built out. So that's the cell build out of everything we'll need in order to start the programming.